Right then, so I just got back from Wix. That's what I need. So I've just got out all of the tools that I might be needing. So I'm putting up my shelves. If you keep all your screws in the same place, it makes it that little bit stronger. It certainly ain't cheap. Also had a load of my deliveries turn up as well. Got these pumps to open up later on in this video. I wanted to just give myself a bit of playing room just to make sure that it fit exactly how I wanted it to fit. I've had a look inside of here, but there's two air lines in the bottom. It just tidies it up, makes it look a little bit better. And it will look absolutely wicked being black. They're all up on the wall, looking absolutely the hammer. Right? And, the, and the massive dent that side, I don't even know what it is. Moving on to the rubber boots. So it just shows how much that is being reduced. It's supposed to be a two inch rubber boot and I can't even get that in there. Look, look how tight that is. Look. A little bit on that table was well over 200 quid. 245, I think the total bill was for the whole lot. Tidies everything up because I like working tidy. I like working tidy and talking to tidy, he is the whisperer. One thing I've also done as well, I had my electrician out last night. I've got to work out how much electric that I'm using. It's all tax deductible. I've popped this one here up on the wall. I've popped this one here up on the wall. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up real quickly. I have got a membership page started now as well. I've just got back from Wix. Got one sheet of 18 mil ply. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna be making up some stands to put onto my filters. One for the bio, one for the drum. It's a bit overkill, but I'd rather go super strong with it. These lengths were 12 pound a length. What I'm planning to do with this sheet as well is take the section that I need to go on top of the frame and then what I'm planning to do with anything left over, I'm gonna make a load of shelves. I'm gonna chuck all that in the filter house. In the filter house, I've temporarily got one stand made up there. This is out of 6x2 and 4x2. And it will do the job, but I just wanna make it out of a lot better structure. I wanna make it as strong as I possibly can. I wanna bring the bio up roughly around six, six and a half inches. On the side of this bio, I've got some holes which feeds for the air lines. I don't want any water to be bubbling out of the side of them holes. So I wanna bring this up so all my levels in my filter house are working the absolute treat i've popped this one here up on the wall i've popped this one here up on the wall i've also had a load of my deliveries turn up as well got things to go on my pumps unions that i can break apart if i ever need to i've got some ptfe tape i've got a load of two inch brackets believe it or not these are three pound fifty each the amount that i need to buy it certainly ain't cheap i've got some one inch brackets in here somewhere as well there should be there's the one inch brackets that's for my airline. Got a load of bits and pieces in here. Like anything, when you buy pipe work, you think you got enough, but then you never got enough for what you actually need. So hopefully by the end of today or the weekend, I manage to get everything dry fit, then I can dismantle it all, glue it all up, and work out the best way of me doing stuff. A little bit unsure, just turn the light on. A little bit unsure what I'm gonna do about this in this corner. I was out here last night, I fitted my alarm system to my drain which will be pumping all of my wastewater from my drum into this gully drain which feeds underneath into this sump and then this sump there's a pump inside of there which pumps my water back to waste which goes through the silt trap which is there and then it goes into the silk away i wanted to fit this alarm on the board here if this ever goes green it means that this here's overfilled and my pump in the bottom of that hasn't turned on i'll take it apart and show you later on i've still got to tidy up all of the wires here but i'm a little bit unsure how i'm going to get all of my returns back from here i've got these pumps to open up later on in this video show you what i'll be running how i'll be setting them up i'm going to just take it as it comes and work out the best way that i think is a way of doing stuff but i'm a, bit, a little bit struggling on the best way of me sitting me pump where i'm going to sit it to how I'm gonna return it. Ideally, I've got three returns here, so I'm gonna have one return over there, which I've just put in place just to see where it's gotta go. I'm gonna bring that up somewhere here, and I don't know the best place or where the best place is, so I can have three separate feeds, and how I'm gonna do that off of one pump to make sure that each flow is exactly the same. Let's carry on with the video. First job, I'm gonna make these stands. So inside of the filter house as well, I've also fit the extractor fan timer switch what i've got to go and pick up in a minute one thing i've also done as well i had my electrician out last night just to plumb in something this little gadget here was 45 pound just for this little gadget but what that does it'll give me a reading of how much electric over the year or week or six months however i want to take a reading from it gives me a reading how much electric actually i run through this filter house how much electric that 
I'll be using over the course of however long I want to read it from when I want to start the pond. And it just gives me an idea of how much electric that actually runs through the filter race. Main reason being, I make YouTube videos and what happens is that because I've got adverts on my video, I get paid. I get paid by the ads. Main reason why that's there is that if I'm getting paid by the ads, I've got to work out how much electric that I'm using because it's all tax deductible. They want to charge me tax, I'm going to deduct some tax. I've got to know exactly how much electric I'm using through this setup, the videos that I'm making, how much it costs me to run. Simple. So I've just got out all of the tools that I might be needing. I'm probably going to need a load more bits. Well, in fact, I know there's one thing I'm going to need. I'm going to go grab that now. Look, welly boots all over the place. Right. That's what I need. Without the circular saw, I've got no chance of cutting that ply. Right, so what I've done, I've worked out the measurements of my bio filter. So in width, he's 660 mil. And then in length, he's 110 mil. Just going to trim up this one first. I'll be back with you in a bit. Right then, so there we go, it's all knocked up. What I did here, I literally have used three of those lengths. One, two, three. That there will be ample strong enough to hold the weight of this water. I'm sure it will be more than man enough. 18 mil ply, 150 mil sleepers. I mean, I could brace it across the middle as well, but I, I mean, I really don't think that this will be a major problem. You can see how close that I've put these supports in the middle here. And obviously with the structure on the top, that's taking the full load anyway. I think this will be more than strong enough. I'm a bit OCD on my screws. Marked an inch in on the top of them all. Draw me straight edge, draw me straight edge to get the center point. And then all of my screws are all equal distance apart. And it looks tidy. If you keep all your screws in the same place, it makes it that little bit stronger. That's what I believe anyway. And it only takes two minutes with one of those set squares. Also countersunk the heads of the screws. And then I pre-drilled with a six mil bit, drilled 100 mil screws straight the way through. Happy days. You don't want to see me drilling a load of stuff. So let's pop this one in place and see if we're at the right height. We got the stand in for the big bio. You can see here I've overhanged this by 50 mil this side and 50 mil this side. For the pure fact I thought there's a lot of weight in there. I wanted to just give myself a bit of playing room just to make sure that it fit exactly how I wanted it to fit. Four inch rubber boot, the connection is bang on in line that way and it will be bang on in line that way as well. But yeah, more than happy with that. Does the job and it brings it up to perfect level. So as you can see here, this level here, no water's gonna come out of those holes. Obviously, the you've ne never had a look inside of here, but there's two air lines in the bottom and the way they've done this, they've tucked the airline pipe, all cable tied in nice and neat and tidy out the way. They get it out as nice and neat as well, but I didn't realise that there was holes the way they get it out. Better that they've done that, but it just means that I had to bring it up slightly. But it's all done now, it's sorted, so it means I can carry on with me plumbing. I can plumb up in around here to work out the height to go into there. Now I'm at the right height. So what I did, I measured off of that line which is the water level, there's a line here somewhere, right there. And then I've teed it across right there. So I've got ample room underneath. You can see my water line is gonna run across here. I could have it slightly lower if I wanted, but I thought I'd better bearing it up because when it's bubbling and foaming and doing its thing, I didn't want any water running out the side there. So hopefully that there's a winner, winner chicken dinner. But what I'm doing now, so I'm putting up my shelves. Drive in there like that. Put a couple of smaller ones up here. One in there. Check his level. Check his level. Like that, see, boy. The reason why these shelves are here, so I can put all of my treatments, everything that I've got, can go up here. Happy days. I've got more than that, mine, but we'll get all that across later on. Just wanted to work out the height in between there to make sure I can get everything that I've got on there. And um, happy days, I'll probably put a front plate on these as well, just to stop things falling off. Not that it will, it'll make it look that bit better, hopefully. And then paint them, give them a sand off in a second, give them a bit of a paint up. Happy, happy days, another job done. 
So as you can see here, I've just tidied up this here as well. I've hid the wires in this little bit of trunking. Not even sure what it is, but I had it left over, so I thought I'm just as well use it. So it tidies it up up here, turns round here, it's as neat as I can get it in there, to be fair, without buying any of the fancy equipment to put a 90 on it and then put a 90 in. I'm happy with what I've done. It just tidies it up, makes it look a little bit better. Now I can work out how I'm going to fit these pipes. And I need to bring this one up and over first and get it in the sort of place where it needs to be. Right then, so I've moved on to having a look at my pumps. I haven't actually took these out of the box since I've had them. Pond Expert, very flow, 30,000 litres an hour. The control panels on them are all touchscreen. Gotta be honest with you, I always used to use the Evolution Aqua ones. With them, they were like touch buttons. With this one, it's, it, well, there's no button on it as such. I think it's just, well, I'm hoping it's just, just like a tapping sort of system because there's no actual button itself if you press it, it doesn't do anything if you know what i mean you don't feel like you're pressing a button but i'm sure it'll be completely fine and it will look absolutely wicked being black onto the black theme that i've got going on in the filter house with these pumps for the pure fact of i wanted new pumps on the filter but taking these out of the box brand new inspecting them this one there's no problem whatsoever with but this one here taking out of the box I mean, these are 300 and I think they're 330 pound each I've paid for them. So they're not cheap. If you have a look at this, that there is absolutely appalling. I'm hoping it don't affect, and I don't even know what it is. It's like a misshape. I'm hoping it doesn't affect the pump itself in the way of that I'll get a leak from there. I'm hoping it don't. But yeah, for, for paying the sort of money that I did, for that to be like that, I'm not overly impressed to be fair that there's absolutely shocking so not really impressed about that i don't know if it's been i can't even see why it's been dropped or anything because inside of the box it was super well packed so i don't really know what that is but if it does cause me any problems don't get me wrong i will be getting older pond expert and i'll be telling them that they need to send me out a new one because that is absolutely appalling for a brand new pump i'm hoping it don't affect it but that being said let's carry on i'm going to set these up put them in place show you where i want to put them and then I can tidy up the wires. Just put these in place first. They're all up on the wall, looking absolutely the hammer. I've got to get some of these black clips, pretty much like these, but I need some small ones. I need some real small ones, just for individual wires, because what I want to do, this wire is coming across, coming down into there, and I want to pin everything nice and neat against the wall. This one is going to be exactly the same, so two of these will be fit into that one and that one. And then this here will be for connecting up the actual pump itself. When I get the pumps in the right place, what I'm going to do is tidy up this cable because I've got absolutely loads and loads of it. So I've got plenty of room, but no matter where I decide to put the pumps, I can tidy up the cables nice and neat wherever I need them to go. And I'll get that looking the absolute hammer. But yeah, well impressed with that looking absolutely wicked. Made sure it's lovely plumbing level. Everything's got to be level. If it ain't level, it ain't right. And I'll know it'll just annoy me. So I'll better to take me time, get it done right, get it done once, and then I don't have to ever do it again. Well, that's as long as the pump don't pack up. But yeah, very concerned about that, to be fair, on this one. That little dent that side. And the massive dent that side, I don't even know what it is. Don't know what would cause it to do that, but definitely not happy about it. I'm glad I'm making this video because I've literally just took them out of the box and there's nothing I've done to that myself. Um, but apart from that, well impressed with them they look pretty pretty damn good and i do like the color theme on them not that that really matters glad i've gone with these over the other ones because these here look the absolute hammer and so i've just unboxed everything that i had in my delivery just to show you what i got just run through some of the bits that i bought so i bought four of the evolution aqua four inch end caps bought a whole pack of the two inch clips whole pack of the one inch clips or two lots of pcfe tape i bought three rubber boot 90s evolution aqua i bought one t90 four this is all four inch i also bought four of the two inch evolution aqua these are the best rubber boots i've found to be fair i'll show you that in a minute some other fixings as well so i bought some 90s i bought some 45s and i bought some i can't remember what these are called to be fair but to go on the end of my pumps if i ever need to replace my pumps i can unscrew this with it being solvent welded and it just makes life easier some people do whack a rubber boot straight on the end of the pump but i prefer to do it this way use loads of pcfe tape and it's just something that i'm going to do to be fair moving on to the rubber boots i've been buying rubber boots from different companies and and different brands to be fair and i've got to, i've got to put my hands up evolution aqua 
they are the best for rubber boots. I'll give you a few examples. As you can see these here, two inch rubber boot, well that there's still a two inch hole pretty much all the way through. It does reduce slightly in here on the bend, but very, very minimal. I bought some off of eBay in the past, like this. Never actually used it. And the rubber itself, it just feels like it's gonna break. It feels like it's not as good quality. And I've also bought some, these actually come from Coastal Koi. I bought all of my other pipe work, all of the ball valves from Coastal Koi, and I've not had a problem with that as yet. Rubber boots, what I've had from them, I'm definitely not happy with the two inch rubber boots. I bought actually four of these from them and I paid a fiver each. But if you can look inside of there, just want to give people the heads up. So if you buy a two inch rubber boot, you expect it to be a two inch hole all the way through. Well, that there is definitely reduced a hell of a lot more. Let me put it against an Evolution Aqua one so you can see. Can you see the difference on that? There's a hell of a difference. I'm definitely going to go with the Evolution Aqua ones. There is no bigger than an inch to be fair. I'll tell you what I'll do for a demonstration. If I sit that there, that is an inch pipe fitting. Trust me, that's an inch. And I can't even get that in that little hole. So it just shows how much that is being reduced. And that's supposed to be a two inch rubber boot and I can't even get that in there. Look, look how tight that is, look. So, Anyone that's going to buy a rubber boot from Coastal Koi, just heads up for people that are buying pipe work and fittings at the moment. Just bear it in mind. Demonstration on this one. I think that they'll come all the way out with no problem whatsoever. So that will definitely restrict your flow rate and I'm not going to be using them. I'll probably end up giving them away to somebody that needs something to get them up and running because these pipe fittings are certainly not cheap and while we're here i just wanted to say a massive thank you to people because without you guys watching the video there's no way that i would be able to be doing what i'm doing at the moment buying these pipe fittings because believe it or not just that little bit on that table was well over 200 quid 245 i think the total bill was for the whole lot there's no way i would be able to afford that i'm a working family man and the reason why I make these YouTube videos, I get paid on the adverts that you see that you're watching on my content. So I want to say a massive thank you to all of the support. Well, let's carry on with this video. I'm just going to get all of this up on the shelf, get it up out of the way. So then when I'm doing the rest of my pipe work, I can just grab what I need and go from there. Tidies everything up because I like working tidy. I like working tidy. And talking to tidy, check that out. That is the absolute hammer. That's the Koi Whisperer right there. He is the whisperer. Yeah, you join me out here in the conservatory at the moment, just having me morning coffee, just thinking to myself what I'm gonna get up to today. It is a Sunday, we love a Sunday. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up real quickly. I have got a membership page started now as well. All this means on the membership page, just allowing YouTube perks. Loads of other content creators do this as a as an added extra to their channel. Nothing else will change. I'll still be putting out my weekly videos or any other video on YouTube. Nothing else will change whatsoever. But if you wanna to subscribe to the membership, there's two different subscriptions. One subscription at 3.99. What that does, it gives you, every time you write a comment on any video that you see, no matter where, if it be a live video or if it will be a normal video, you'll get a little badge next to your name, which tells me that you're a supporter of the channel. And that there, to me means a hell of a lot so any questions that you ask me i will reply to you and i thought to myself well i'm going to be dedicating my time to the people that help me support this channel i'm not saying i'm not going to reply to anyone that hasn't got the membership as such i'm just saying that as an added extra if it's something that you want and shows me that you're helping support this channel and making this channel grow but there's also another feature that i've got there as well doing once a week after the end of each sunday video and randomly as well that I'll be doing live updates to members only access that they'll be able to get. It's just an extra perk. That's all it is. So you'll be getting live access to live videos. Could be as random as me showing you what I'm up to next week. or And it could also be as random if I decide to have a barbecue, fire up and have a beer and just decide to have a chat with you guys. Or if you want to ask me questions and that's where we got the live memberships. Just wanted to be completely clear that nothing else will change. There'll still be weekly videos. But if you do want to become a member and if you do want to get involved in the live members only videos, that option's there for you. 
I'm not saying that you have to do it, but if you want to do it, it'd be very, very much appreciated and I won't be able to thank you enough. A bit of stick off people by saying, oh, you're charging for your videos. I'm not the only YouTuber that does this. There's thousands among thousands of people do it. It's actually a perk put in place by YouTube to help people grow their channels. I'm saving for a new camera as well at the moment. The camera I'm looking at buying to make my videos better is 2,500 quid. I'm a working family man. I've got so much content to show you. I've got so many ideas and so much things planned for the future. And I'm just trying to make the best of it. So with your help and your support, we can really make this happen. Try to make the videos even better. There's a load of yibbity yabbity going on and I'm bound to get a bit of stick for this at the end of the videos. But I'll tell you one thing's for sure now as well. Well, some of the comments that have been coming in recently are telling me what I should and shouldn't do and things like that. Actually, this is my channel. If you don't want to watch my videos, don't write me a, a nasty, horrible comment. I would like to say a few other words, but unfortunately on this channel, I'm not allowed to. I'm at the stage now where I'll be introducing the word block, negativity about my channel, what I'm gonna do. That's it, I can't be doing with it anymore. Some, sometimes it really gets to you and, and mental health and everything else, some of the comments that I have to read is absolutely appalling. I'm not begging people to subscribe. I'm not begging people to buy my merchandise. The option's there if you would like to and I wouldn't be able to thank you enough. It would be like, you know, happy days. You can't be everyone's cup of tea, you can't. Please everybody 90% of the time. Some of the messages that some people were mugging me off by and some of the things that they were saying, if we were down the pub, it wouldn't last two minutes with some of the things I've had to read. I know that much. I do want to apologize for my little rant here a minute, but sometimes with some of the messages that I've just read here a second ago, I'm absolutely disgraced by my attitude here at the moment because I'm generally not like that, but sometimes it just gets to me. I want to end the video here. I want to say thank you very much for watching the video and check back next week because we got loads of stuff going on. Thank you, mother for the rabbits. Over and out.